common sense thing. Common sense solution to help us and help all professionals and to make life better for us. <coughs> In addition to his background in public service, he uh, learned about your hard work and responsibility and his experience in business, insurance, banking, previously served as vice chairman of House Standing, House Standing Committee, Tourism and Energy, member of the committees for banking and insurance, elections, constitutional amendments, intergovernmental, in, intergovernmental affairs, health and welfare, tourism development, and energy, has been director of any and pressure from the general firm. Graduate of Eastern Kentucky University, degrees in math, statistics, theater, Valedictorian of his Boyle County High School class. Serves as a deacon, church moderator, Junction City First Baptist Church, Dan. Right? Mm -hmm. Or J Junction City, yeah. Junction City. Address, mailing address is Dan, but it's technically mm -hmm. in Junction City. So. Many of his most proud of being, being married to his wife, Lynn, for more than 29 years. Have two daughters, Tony and Lizzie. Proud grandpa. Aiden and Thomas. Mm -hmm. I love this philosophy. Mike's tried to live by it his whole life, especially after he adopted his first successful election in public office. Here's the value. Quote, I have no desire to leave a legacy, except that I serve my Lord, I serve my family, and I serve my country well. End quote. Help me make welcome. Thank you so very much. Appreciate you. All righty. How's everybody doing today? All right. We all excited? All right. Well, we appreciate everybody. Appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Uh, as you said, my name's Mike Harmon. I am your Kentucky State Auditor. Uh, I always like to start with something funny, and uh, much to the chagrin of my communications director there, I, I'm gonna tell an old joke that I used to tell. Well, first let me do a survey. How many people have heard the Clarence joke? How many people have heard the Clarence joke? All right, good, see Mike, a new audience. There you go. <laughs> well, it was this, uh, there was this Kentucky girl, and she had fallen in love with this Indiana boy, just fallen in love. And so she calls up her daddy and says, uh, Daddy, you know, I've fallen in love with Clarence. He said, Clarence? Isn't Clarence one of them uh, Indiana boys? And she said, yes, sir, he is. said, I don't want you marrying that Indiana boy. I hear they're mean. I hear sometimes they throw chairs. That's a flashback to some of us, ain't by it. But anyway, you know how little girls are? I had two of them, and of course, they have daddy wrapped around their fingers. So she ends up calling. Her dad, she goes ahead and gets married. About two years later, she calls up her dad and she says, Daddy, you were right. Clarence is being mean to me. I said, don't you worry. Grab your two big brothers. We'll come up there and we'll take care of old Clarence. So <clears throat> they hop in the car. They drive up to Louisville, drive across the bridge into Indiana. But just as soon as they get into Indiana, Dad turns that car around and starts heading right back to Louisville. And the two brothers says, Daddy, Daddy. Aren't we going to help Sissy? And he looked at his two brothers, I mean the two sons, and he said, Boys, I'd love to, but didn't you see that sign when we crossed the bridge? Clarence, 11 foot 7. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, now, I told that story to our auditors when I first started. And the reason I told them that is so many times, and in life this occurs to people too, is so many times in life we see what we believe to be a giant, what we think is giant. But you know what? We don't have the right information. We need to look for, further. We need to get the right information. Those individuals with disabilities, they still have a great ability. God gave them a purpose to be here. So it's important. 
Also, the very first thing that I did when I entered the auditor's office is I told all our people, we don't target anyone, we don't give anyone a pass, we just simply follow the data. You know, data should be nonpartisan. Data should be nonpartisan. It should be what it is, so it's very important. Uh, give you a little background, some of it was mentioned. Uh, and I, I uh, of course, it was mentioned that I, I graduated EKU. I did graduate Eastern Kentucky University. And I did graduate with a triple major in math, statistics, and theater. I tell everybody that way I know the math, I know the stats, and when I don't know, I just act like I know. So in politics, it worked out quite well. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I did graduate with a triple major. <clears throat> but you know, served 13 years in the Kentucky House and then was elected to auditor. And, uh, you know, it's been a true blessing. I've been extremely humbled to have the opportunity to serve. Um, and it's, uh, it's interesting because, you know, we do a lot. A lot of people don't realize what the auditor does. Uh, we do five to 600 audits per year, everything from your fiscal courts to your sheriffs to your county clerks. But we also do a lot of what's known as special exams. And special exams are where we get the chance just to kind of break free a little bit of the normal accounting standards. We still use accounting standards, but you know, break free some of them and look a little more in depth. And so we've done a, you know, a great deal of those as well. Uh, the very first one we did through the door was the CLEP Fund. That's the Kentucky Law Enforcement Foundation Program Fund. Uh, we did that to assure the tax dollars that were intended for our police and fire ended up with our police and fire. And uh, I can tell you that now they are, so that was a very important thing for us to do. Um, I can also tell you <coughs> from the standpoint, uh, we, did, uh, we did a, a governance exam of the University of Louisville Foundation, the University of Louisville. And I'll be honest with you, when I first, that particular uh, audit was open, we went there, the previous auditor had started it. And when I got there, a lot of, there was a lot of questions, a lot of, of pressure to do it, but I said, you know, before we do it, before we actually finish it up and do it, let's see, because it's a foundation. I mean, we're supposed to be auditing, you know, basically, you know, uh, government entities. And since it was a private foundation, I had some concern. So I had our people follow the data, we looked at it, and they had actually received tax dollars through the Bucks for Brain. So we went ahead and we actually, uh, went, we actually sat down and as it turned out, we, uh, we were able to get the chairman at the time to write us a letter requesting us to go ahead and do it. And so that was good and we worked with them. We had some trouble early on getting some data once we got that agreement, uh, but when leadership changed, we were able to get it. But it was interesting, the governance exam between the University of Louisville and the, and, uh, the uh, University of Louisville Foundation, we found things like the university had lent the foundation $67 million. Well, really the foundation is there to support the university, not the university to support the foundation, but perhaps the most surprising thing that we found was that a billion dollar foundation, billion dollar foundation, did not have budget to actuals, did not have a line item budget. Now, I'm gonna tell you, I'm as was indicated in my, uh, bio that I am church moderator at our church, it's not a huge church, probably one of the larger churches in the area, but it's not a huge church. And um, we have a budget to actual, you know. So that was surprising. They weren't doing orientation for the new board members. So the good thing about it is once we did that, the university actually used our audit as a roadmap to get themselves back on track. So they're working diligently that university is important, uh, you know, for the state, just as all our universities are important. Uh, for the state. <coughs> so we were very pleased that they did uh, that, utilize that particular item. Um, you know, some of the other things that, that we have done in that regards, uh, you know, we, we've, I'm trying to think, we, we have just done a substantial amount of special exams. We just recently released our special exam of Senate Bill 2 compliance. That was Senate Bill 2 from 2017 that basically was requiring greater transparency in our pension systems. You know, a lot of people know that we have, we struggle currently with our unfunded pension liability. So in 2017, the General Assembly felt like it was important to have more transparency in how those are invested. So unfortunately, when we did that audit, we found that they were actually woefully lacking in the requirements of Senate Bill 2. 
Uh, one, both KRS and KTRS, that's your state retirement, state and county retirement, and your teacher's retirement, uh, they were not complying. Both of them had failed to post 80% plus of contracts. KRS was a little concerning because uh, they had provided us three different sets of data and every set of data was different, which creates great concern there. Um, <coughs> so we did release uh, the report. Also some of the things KRS was doing, KRS was allowing the investment managers to do the redactions. They weren't challenging them and they weren't requiring them to provide any explanation as to why certain items, were, and certain items can be redacted. There are certain trade secrets that needed to be you know, protected. Uh, but they were redacting things like the table of contents. I mean, no one can really argue that a table of contents uh, is a trade secret. So anyway, so KRS was you know, doing that. KTRS, on the other hand, the teacher's retirement system. Now they had a system in place for redaction. They still let the investment managers redact. They still provided them uh, information, but KTRS kind of went the other way. Uh, they would take stuff that had already been redacted and they redacted more. So they were kind of violating the spirit. Now the other thing was in that bill, there was also some requirements about disclosures of fees. Because typically, I sit on public pension oversight board, that's part of what the auditor's role is. We don't. We don't vote, or I don't vote, uh, and the auditor's office doesn't vote because we actually audit, you know, we don't want to create an impairment. <coughs> but um, uh, from the standpoint, one of the things that they required in that bill was the disclosure of fees, not how they got the fees, but just the fees, because what we look at at public pension, you look at a gross rate of return, you look at the amount of fees, and then you look at the net rate of return. Because, you know, you can make a whole lot, you know, you can say you make 14%, but if you're cost of your fees is 7% and you only, you know, net seven. So anyway, uh, KRS was properly reporting what's known as carried interest. That's just a, like a profit sharing, you know, with the investment managers. KTRS was not, they were not disclosing that. Now they said they can't disclose it. And I said, well, that's, you know, we don't audit to the laws you'd like to see on the books. We audit to the laws that are on the books. So it was important. So that, that was a very important thing. Now, the other thing that the auditor office does, other than all these audits, all these special exams, we also, we also try to be as much of a resource as we can to our county officials, our state. Uh, we, oh, is it on? Okay. My apologies. All right. So everybody can still hear me? All right. So we try to be as much of a resource as we can without a, impairing our ability to audit. Uh, you know, we, we help provide training. We sponsor a county auditors conference uh, every year so that we can uh, try to uh, give people additional training. Department of Local Government does a good job, but sometimes it's important for us to kind of fill some of those holes where they can't do. And the other thing is, is since I had 13 years in the Kentucky General Assembly, my chief of staff, who many of you in this area know, Sarah Beth Gregory, had two years in the House and the two years in the Senate. We've been very successful in advancing good pieces of bipartisan legislation to help government be efficient and effective and ethical. So some of those items we've done, just to give you one example, uh, in uh, 2018, we were able to uh, look at a law that was uh, in Ohio that we thought, uh, now some people call that stealing in government, we don't steal, we appropriate. So we appropriated a law that was in Ohio, that's a joke, but uh, <laughs> that was in Ohio. And that particular law, that particular law basically said that if your sheriffs and your county clerks have a clean audit the year before, they can apply for, and this is on their financial statement audit, uh, they can apply for uh, what's known as an AUP, which is an agreed upon procedure. And, and, and some people say, well, why is that important? Well, a lot of people don't realize that the auditor's office actually invoices for audits. Uh, the majority of our revenue, what keeps the doors open, keeps us you know, uh, working, is where we invoice for it. So by, by basically allowing them to do that, one, it saves them cost. Our original analysis, we wanted to be conservative. We didn't want to pump it up. We originally figured 25 to 50%. But now that we've had that uh, law passed, the Senate Bill 144, uh, once it's been passed and we've been doing some of these, we're actually finding in many cases it's, it's saving them 50% plus. 
Uh, another thing it does, it gives our sheriffs and our county clerks, if they have one or two findings that you know they just don't pay attention to for whatever reason, uh, it gives them an incentive to try to get them cleaned up. Some, some things they have a struggle with, some of your smaller offices have a uh, concern about lack of segregation of duties, but uh, certainly there's some compensating control you can put up. But it gives them incentives to make sure they don't have any. Uh, the other thing it does, it helps us because all, all government offices, if any of you all work in government or have worked in government, know people work in government, we're doing more and more with less and less. And so we have to be more efficient. So it allows us to take auditors off lower risk audits and put them on higher risk audits. Uh, so it helps us all out. And we've had multiple bills like that. I won't go in, into all of them, but we've had multiple bills like that. Now, one other thing I always like to share is uh, <coughs> about six months ago, might be seven now, but about six or seven months ago, I ended up losing a vehicle in high water. I know that's hard to believe. We just recently had a rain, uh, so it would have been dry for a long time. But prior to it being dry, I was coming back from Pikeville, going uh, through McGoffin County. And as it turned out, I, um, I was going through McGoffin County, and there was a mudslide out in the Mountain Parkway. Well, I got diverted away from the mudslide. Unfortunately, it diverted, uh, diverted me right into high water. Uh, I didn't see it, it was dark. And uh, There was an article in the Danville, or a little local paper in the Danville that someone put there and then someone like on the digital version put in there, don't drown, turn around. Well, you know, if we'd saw it, we, we of course would have turned around, but we didn't see it. Well, I won't go into the whole story. I turned it into a whole funny story. I like taking things that happen bad to me and make them funny so I can at least laugh at it a little bit later. But, but anyway, uh, so we ended up getting separated from our car and, uh, and ended up in a rescue area. Of course, you know how us politicians are. Every time you go, hi, I'm Mike Carmen, Kentucky State Auditor. Hi, I'm Mike Carmen, Kentucky State Auditor. Where we went. Well, this one guy said, hey, listen, I, I, want to, I want you to come and meet. I want you to come and meet my wife. So I went over and said, hi, I'm Mike Carmen, Kentucky State Auditor. And she said, Mike Carmen. Hmm, Mike Carmen. You know what, we've got a Mike Harmon here. And I said, you do? She so said, yeah, but he's a mortician. And I just looked at her. It had been a rough night, but I just looked at her and kind of grinned. And I said, well, you know, that's where we differ. Everybody's dying to see him. No one's dying to see the auditor. <laughs> and I guess there is some truth to that. I guess there is some truth to that. But... Uh, but you know what, a lot of people don't understand what the auditor's office does. And I've talked to you a lot about what they do, but a lot of people think that the auditor's office is like the IRS. But I tell everybody, we're not like the IRS. We're your auditor. We work for you. It is our role as auditor to be efficient, effective, and ethical. And just like I said at the beginning of this, you know, I told all our people, we don't turn anyone, we don't give anybody a pass, we just simply follow the data. And I think that's important. I think it's always important that, that we do that. So we do a lot of things. Now, finally, I will, I will leave you with this. One of the other things we've done when, we, when I got there, uh, it, was, it was a year or two before we started doing this, but you know, there's tons of information out there. I mean, there's tons of information out there. So what we like to do is we like to distill it down. We like to distill it down to something that, you know, the average individual that's working, trying to feed their family, trying to raise their family, trying to go to church, guess what? Not everybody is deeply involved with uh, everything going on in government. And so we like to distill that down, just kind of help them get their mind wrapped around some of the information. So we've been releasing some of the things, what we call data bulletins. And one of the data bulletins we did was the debt data bulletin. And that debt data bulletin basically showed that the state, now this doesn't include your counties, it doesn't include your cities, it's just the state, showed that the state was 54.6 billion, that's billion with a B, in debt. Now these numbers aren't audited, this is just numbers we pull off, sometimes we might have to call and confirm one or two things, but 54.6 billion dollars in debt. Of that, about 80% of that, was due to the unfunded pension liabilities. Well, if you take that 54.6 billion, you divide it by every man, woman, and child in the state of Kentucky, that equates to about $12,300 for every man, woman, and child in the state of Kentucky. So that, that helps you put 
we got to work on. Problem we got to work on. Now, when I first started telling that, I used to stand at the door and say that I was taking your check for twelve thousand three hundred before you you walk out. But after I got beat up a couple of times, I quit doing that. I don't. No, I know that never happened. That never happened. But uh, I tell you what, it's it's been an honor to be here. Uh, and I will tell you, I will close with this. Uh, if you have any tips for abuse, or if you just want to see the great work of the auditor's office. You can go to auditor.ky.gov. You can search for if you want to see what's going on in your county or see what your uh, sheriff or county clerk, you know, any audits, you can search by county uh, and find it. But, uh, and, but also, if you have tips of waste, fraud, or abuse, there's a tips line. You can click on that, and, it, and it's supposed to be anonymous. Uh, or you can uh, also call 1-800-KY-ALERT. So we encourage you, you know, a lot of what we do is through our tips. A lot of it's, you know, our decisions, uh, things that have never been audited before. Uh, one other data bulletin, and I will just quickly go back and say this, one of the data bulletins we did was a regional jail, and we had found that that particular regional jail had not been audited since its formation, had not been audited in 10 years, and so we are going to do that. So that's something we like to do, and, and that didn't come out of a tip, it came out of us doing the data bulletins, but certainly we've had plenty come from tips. Thank you all, God bless, and everybody have a great day. You want, you want questions?